My name is Dario Sorrentino. I work at the University of Udine Medical School, and I'm going to present a paper on behalf of my colleagues. Post-surgical recurrence of Crohn's disease remains, as of today, a major problem in the management of these patients. We have shown two years ago that infliximab, by contrast with all the other medications tried for the purpose, does afford protection against this complication in the large majority of patients. Our data were recently confirmed by a paper published in the February issue of Gastroenterology by Rivera and colleagues. However, a major issue which remains to be solved in these patients is what to do in the long term. Can we actually stop infliximab and still maintain the disease under full control? Or if not, can we devise a strategy to minimize the risks of potential long-term side effects and reduce the cost of therapy? Our study, which is a prospective cohort study, was actually aimed at answering these questions. For the purpose, we followed up 12 patients who had been treated for two years with the standard infliximab maintenance treatment, that's five milligrams per kilogram body weight, and who were completely free of endoscopic and clinical recurrence at two years. We treated them likewise for an additional year, after which time we checked them again for clinical and endoscopic recurrence. In patients who were free of recurrence, we actually stopped the medication and perform the colonoscopy four months later to check for mucosal recurrence. In patients who had mucosal recurrence, we restarted therapy with infliximab at low doses. This is actually the new concept which is being, which is being explored in our study, and it's based on the rationale that the disease being in an early phase may actually be responsive to low doses of medication. In addition to that, we check the levels of fecal caprotectin, ESR, and CRP, and sort the correlation between these putative markers of disease activity and the mucosal status at different infliximab doses. The results show that after three years of standard infliximab maintenance therapy, none of these patients had developed clinical or endoscopic recurrence. However, when we stopped the medication, 10 out of 12 patients, that they, that's 83%, had developed mucosal recurrence at four months. We then restarted therapy with infliximab, and we saw that neither one milligram or two milligram per kilogram body weight were sufficient to reinduce mucosal integrity in these patients. However, three milligram per kilogram body weight were sufficient to reinduce mucosal integrity in all of them. We continued therapy for a total of a full year and checked again to make sure that the benefit was long lasting. After one year of therapy at three milligram per kilogram body weight, none of these patients had developed endoscopic recurrence. They all maintained mucosal integrity. In addition, fecal caprotectin levels correlated really well with the mucosal status at different infliximab doses. We believe that our study is important, is novel, and that it explores for the first time in gastroenterology the concept that the disease being in an early phase, such as the post-op setting, could be controlled in the long term with low doses of infliximab. And that might have interesting implications for both the risk of potential long-term side effects and the cost of therapy. Fecal caprotectin appears to correlate well with the mucosal status of different infliximab doses, and this finding may have important implications for future trials. We thank you very much for your attention.